time that the semester was ending and I had a little bit more time on my hands and I kind of revisited that idea and talked with one of my teammates about it. We went for a walk and I was like, you know what? I think it would be cool if I started a podcast. And she was basically like, you should go for it. You'd be awesome at that. And I was thinking to myself, well, there are literally zero barriers of entry to starting a podcast because you can just start it with your phone on voice memos, upload it to a free hosting site and boom, it's on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and people can listen to it anywhere. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you know, uh, the premise of this show is we focus on stories, strategies, and successes, ultimately to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. So if you have not connected with us, I would encourage you all to make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel. You can just type in Jonathan Jones Speaks and then the podcast will come up there. And then also we started the Instagram page back up so you can go to Beyond the Ball podcast on Instagram and find us there. But without further ado, I'm excited um, for, for today's guest. And uh, after, after just just spending some time just just chatting with this young lady just offline and and then now here we are doing the interview I'm excited for it for selfish reasons because I, I told her you know j just with seeing some of the stuff that she's been able to do and just seeing how innovative she's been we're gonna go ahead and dive in okay and and today's guest she, she's a UF gymnast okay okay she's a foodie as well as a podcast host welcome to the beyond the ball podcast the one and only Leah Clapper Leah how are you doing I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me today. Definitely, definitely glad to have you on uh, the show. Now, Leah, I know I didn't hit it all, so please just just take a moment and just introduce yourself uh, and just give the audience just a snapshot of who you are. Yeah, of course. So my name is Leah Clapper. As you know, I'm a gymnast at University of Florida. I just finished up my junior year, so it's crazy, but I guess I'm a rising senior. <laughs> and I have majored in advertising the past three years. I'm actually graduating in a couple weeks, which is really exciting. But I'll be back next year for a master's program. And outside of school and outside of gymnastics, I like to take on personal projects. I've always been really ambitious. So back in 2018, I started my own food blog. I actually started it with my sister, Lily, who's also a gymnast. She's amazing. Just a little side note, but it's been really fun um, taking on that project for the past couple of years. It's called Zest and Finesse. And on the blog, I share all sorts of recipes. I mostly focus on healthy recipes and also baking. So there's some fun baking things, normal cookies and cakes and brownies and things like that but also a lot of it has a little bit of a healthier spin on it and getting all those nutrients to fuel up especially as an athlete so i like to say i my goal is to inspire people to fuel up with delicious and nutritious food alongside me so it's been a lot of fun learning so so much from that journey and from connecting with an audience to you know even hard skills like food photography and building mm. a website so it's really been amazing and i just love that i'm able to create recipes in the kitchen because that is a very calming thing for me i love cooking in the kitchen and then being able to share those things because it's fun to share the wealth and let people enjoy the same recipes that i've come up with so it's been super fun creative outlet for me i love experimenting with content and all sorts of different recipes so that is one of my main things outside of the gym it's called zest and finesse by the way you can find it at zest and and follow me on instagram at zest and finesse all spelled out and then also i launched my own podcast back in december of 2020 so i've been doing it 
for about six months now, which is crazy because I feel like I just started, but it's a little bit of a brand extension. So it's called Zest and Progress. And on the podcast, I like to uncover athlete stories of resilience, energy, and self-confidence. So I've had an amazing time, a bunch of amazing conversations. A lot of my teammates have been on the podcast along with a few other people so I hope to bring inspiration to listeners and just a place to connect and get motivated and feel like you're part of an athletic, but also just really positive community. So that has been another learning experience. It's been a ton of fun and I'm super excited that it introduced me to Jonathan. So I'm really excited to be here today. What's going on, family? I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. As you know, I love podcasting, all right? And I want to give you the opportunity to love podcasting too, all right? I want you to go to 5daystopodcast.com. I want to teach you for free how you can get a podcast up and running from idea all the way up until launch, all right? So go to 5daystopodcast.com completely free enjoy the episode i'll see you inside definitely definitely yeah i mean you said so there, there there's so many points that you hit on that i that i want to that i want to uh definitely follow up with and 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 for one it would be um let's just go at zest and finesse really quick and i, I want you to talk about like how, how did you come up with this concept because i saw that you know you've been a vegetarian since you were six I okay have. Yes. Okay. How, how does how does that happen, Leah? How, how does one become a vegetarian at the age of six? Well, it's a little bit funny. I just have never really enjoyed the texture of meat. It was always a texture th thing for me. And I just never really enjoyed it so much. My family didn't eat a ton of meat. Nobody else in my family was a vegetarian at that point. But I just didn't like it too much. And then one Christmas, I think I was in first grade, and <laughs> my grandparents came over and my dad cooked something that was just really gross looking to me i feel like it might have been chopped liver i'm not really sure but it was totally rare and it was dripping <laughs> red and i just remember sitting at the table on christmas being like this is what meat is that looks disgusting and my stubborn little six-year-old self was like i'm never eating meat again and i told that to my mom and <laughs> you know, that came true because I wouldn't eat it after that. Um, so it's been, it's been a while. It's been almost 15 years that I've been a vegetarian, but I, over time, really started learning more about nutrition and the environmental benefits of being a vegetarian and how to make it work as an athlete and actually be a very healthy lifestyle. So I feel really good about being a vegetarian now, and I just don't honestly have any desire to eat any meat, but it's one thing that I don't like to push on other people because I know everybody has their own relationship with food and their own likes and dislikes in the kitchen. And I know so many people that absolutely love me. And if it's something that makes you happy and makes you feel good, then I don't want to tell you to be a vegetarian. So all of the recipes on my food blog are vegetarian but that's just because that's what i make in the kitchen so for people that are plant-based or wanting to go plant-based i would say i'd love if you check out my blog because everything in there doesn't have meat but it is it's interesting for me i mean People are always surprised when I say I've been a vegetarian since I've been six, but it's a little bit of a fun fact, I guess. Mm, yeah, I mean, because when, when I when I was reading, I was like, wait, how is that possible? But then, just like you said, if you know, at, even as being a child, because you know, during during that time, we're brutally honest, and and during that time, that's just like we let people know how we feel, and, and luckily, your mom was there to hear you, and then you know, she helped you th through that journey. So I think that's um, not not only amazing, but also, I'm I'm curious just to hear from you because I've I've been wanting to make the switch, right? I've been wanting to include more more veggies into my lifestyle, and even been thinking about uh, having a vegan lifestyle. But does it? What, what what are some of the benefits? Can can you just help? Like, does it give you more energy? Is that a myth? Or help help me out? Help me out, Leah. You know, I 
personally feel that I'm a super energized person. It's hard for me to compare because I don't remember mm. what it was really like eating meat when I was really little, but I've heard so many stories of people saying that it changed their life and it changed their diet and they absolutely love being a vegetarian or a vegan or whatever it is. And I've also heard people saying, oh yeah, it was cool, but you know, I miss eating meat. And I've done a lot of research into it recently. It's hard because there's so much research out there that is a little bit biased and it does seem like overall um, the research is saying that being a vegetarian or honestly not being completely a vegetarian or a vegan, but eating a mostly plant-based diet, like 90% plant-based is amazing for your health in the long term. So mm. it does promote longevity from what I understand, but the research is always updating itself and you really do want to inform yourself but be sure that you're looking at reputable sources and there are so many people to talk to about that from dietitians and experts in the field so i'm not an expert but i know my own personal story and i do know that there is a ton of amazing recipes out there that are completely plant-based and it's been definitely a trend in later years that there are more vegans and plant-based well that's the same thing i mean they're synonyms being vegan and being plant-based uh, means the same thing but there are so many plant-based recipes out there and what i would say if you're interested in eating less meat or eating more of a plant-based diet i would say start slowly and maybe even just aim to get one meal a day that's completely plant-based and figure out what you like and start substituting things in. Like instead of eating chicken in a stir fry, maybe try tofu and just mm. start, ex um, start experimenting with those vegan proteins and those vegan foods and more veggies and things like that. Um, because it's fun and trying new foods can be awesome and just finding out what you like, but maybe not forcing it on yourself too fast because it is a huge change. If you're going from eating meat at most meals to eating completely plant-based, I would say take it slow and figure out what you like. And there are so many amazing food bloggers out there and so many recipe creators. You can find all sorts of stuff online on Instagram, on food blogs, on Pinterest. So do some searching and it can really be a be a fun process. But I do know a lot of people that have made the switch and really enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I, I was you, you already answered my next question before I was gonna ask it. I was gonna ask you, yeah. where do you find these innovative ideas? Because as I was looking at your, as I was looking at your website, the Zest and Finesse site, I was going down on the right hand side and, you know, I saw like the chocolate cake balls and and I saw like the other recipe. I'm like, oh, my goodness, this looks so good. And I was going to ask you, like, where do you find the inspiration? Like some of these, are you pulling from Pinterest or are you just with, with you having the experiences that you've had since, you know, six? Are you just creating some things on your own? Yeah. So I do create some things that are just completely out of the blue that I just think of and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try this. Sometimes it's just a total flop. A lot of times it actually turns out better than I expect, but <laughs> that is rare. Most of the time I get inspiration from other foodies out there. So I follow so many food accounts on my Zest and Finesse Instagram and on TikTok. And it's just really easy to come across other recipes from whatever comes up based mm -hmm. on my feed, based on the algorithm for me. But I like to scroll through and if I see something that I'm like, ooh, that looks kind of good. I'll kind of make a mental note or I'll save it. And sometimes I like to try other people's recipes, but most of the time I'll notice one thing about the recipe. Like, oh, they put blueberries in that? That's kind of interesting. And it'll just kind of get my mind reeling and I'll come up with something that's completely different. But the idea came from somebody else's recipe or same thing with foods at restaurants. Sometimes I'll order something at a restaurant that like, wow, that was really cool. I kind of want to try and copycat this. And of course mm -hmm. I have no clue what are in the ingredients or what they put in the dish, but 
I try to think of those flavors and maybe make something similar in my kitchen. And usually it ends up completely different, but also <laughs> delicious. So that's another source of inspiration for me. And then lately I've been doing a little thing. I might do a little series where I've been taking my favorite snacks or store-bought foods that I've had in the past and mm -hmm. trying to make them healthier in my own kitchen or create something similar so far. I've tried to make the soft baked cinnamon oat bar and I ended up with this cinnamon rounds recipe that was like a dinner roll that was cinnamon <laughs> raisin. And everything just kind of goes in a different direction, but I love discovering new things in the kitchen for sure. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I love that. So now we're gonna we're gonna take a take a slight pivot, and and right. I, I wanna I wanna now find out just how did you decide that that it was time for you to start a podcast, and then where did this idea even come from? Yes. So last year, I really started getting into podcasts, especially during quarantine. So my mom introduced me to a couple. Thank you, mom. But I really started listening to po a few podcasts and really enjoying just the medium because I could listen while I was eating or listen while I was going for a walk. And it's such a passive listening experience that you can multitask as opposed to watching something, but you can just be constantly learning, which I love because I love learning new things. And I slowly started to find more podcasts that I really enjoyed. And especially when I finally was able to come back to campus after quarantine was over i found myself sitting at my apartment alone a lot and listening to podcasts so i would say now i listen to at least 10 episodes a week because wow. while i'm eating lunch eating dinner um going for a walk anything like that so sometimes even driving and i just was finding I was getting a lot of value out of listening to podcasts. So I'd say I'm an avid podcast listener now. Yeah, I had to name it. But um, I really enjoyed learning stuff and getting motivated. So I would say educational and inspirational podcasts are my favorite. But there came a time last fall where I was like, you know what? I've heard a lot of podcasts. And I think I can do one myself. I think I would be good at this. And I just kind of put that in the back of my mind because I really honestly felt like, why not do one? And it came time that the semester was ending and I had a little bit more time on my hands. And I kind of revisited that idea and talked with one of my teammates about it. We went for a walk. And I was like, you know what? I think it would be cool if I started a podcast. And she was basically like, you should go for it. You'd be awesome at that. And I was thinking to myself, well, there are literally zero barriers of entry to starting a podcast because you can just start it with your phone on voice memos, upload it to a free hosting site and boom, it's on Spotify and Apple podcasts and people can listen to it anywhere. And I literally have to spend zero dollars and I just really felt like, why not do it? There's nothing to lose here. So I committed, I downloaded Anchor so I could distribute my podcast. And then I was like, all right, I got to find a name. And I kind of went through that process. And again, I mentioned my mom a few times already, but she <laughs> was great in helping me decide on a name. And I, every time I thought of something that I kind of thought emulated what I wanted my podcast to be about, somebody already had a podcast that was titled that. Mm. So I eventually came up with Zest and Progress because it rhymes with Zest and Finesse. And it seems kind of like a brand extension, which is cool because I already had Zest and Finesse going on and I felt like it would be uniquely me. And of course, nobody else has a podcast called Zest and Progress. So we settled on that and it means zest as in a zest for life and then progress as in making progress. So that is really what I wanted my podcast to be about. And I started brainstorming and was like, you know what? I'm going to record an episode over winter break. And I did. I recorded a few and posted them. And it was just such an exciting time. And I was thinking, you know, why am I doing this? Because I feel like everything, if you're going to take on a big prog project like that, you have to have an intention behind it. And I definitely found out 
what mine was, but I had a few reasons why I wanted to start a podcast. So these are things that are definitely pushed me to actually go for the idea. One being that I feel like I have a mission to help people and I always want to serve a purpose. And so I wanted to bring motivation to people, especially young gymnasts. I have a social media following full of gymnasts and things like that. So, or people, other athletes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I wanted to bring motivation to them because I knew that I had this platform being on the Gators gymnastics team and I wanted to use it to the best of my ability. So that was reason one, the main why behind the podcast. But then also I felt like it would be a great platform with name image likeness legislation coming up very soon in that I could expand my own personal brand, but also extend a platform for other people to grow on their own platforms as well. So me interviewing another athlete that helps me and it helps them as well. So I thought that might be mutually beneficial and it has been so far, which has been really fun. And then the third reason, which is selfishly, I get to have these amazing conversations with all these amazing people. My teammates and so many other athletes out there have incredible stories and I wanted to be able to sit down and chat about it and be able to share that with other people as well. So those are my three main reasons for starting the podcast. But like I said at the beginning of the episode, it's been an amazing experience so far. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I love I love just your your foresight just in, you know, with creating the podcast, but then also just like you said, having an intention behind it and having a purpose and then even having your, you know, your selfish reasons to get to have amazing conversations, but also getting to share those with with the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's something that uh, a lot more people should tap into, especially a lot more student athletes, especially, you know, with name, image and likeness just coming right around the corner and all of that. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us, Leah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Thank you for sharing that. So I, I don't know why this question popped in my head, but with, with you being a gymnast, what goes through one's head when you're on when you're when you're on the balance beam? Because I because I know for you. Uh, because I went back and watched, you know, I, I watched some of your clips and, mm-hmm. and, and then I also saw that you, that you scored a perfect 10, right? Yes. So what goes, what goes through one's head when you're on the balance beam and like just before you handle your business, talk to me. Yeah. So just hearing that I scored a perfect 10 is making me smile gigantically <laughs> over here because That has been one of my life goals, honestly, ever since I was six or seven years old in gymnastics. I wanted to be a college gymnast, and someday I wanted to score a perfect 10 because I just thought that was absolutely amazing, and I had big dreams, so I thought that maybe I could do it by the time I'm 20 years old, and I'm good at gymnastics at that point. But that stayed a goal of mine through high school, once I got here, I was like, okay, this is my chance to get a perfect 10 because it's really, really, really hard to do that in club gymnastics. But by the time you get to college, you've honed your skills, your routines are really clean. And I really just wanted to work toward that perfect score. And now that I, it actually happened, I just can't even believe it. I watch that video of my beam routine sometimes and I just am overcome with joy because it's just so cool. And honestly, I don't think that was my best beam routine that I've done, but maybe I deserved a 10 at another point and I didn't get it. So it's all good. But yeah, as for your question, there are different things that go through my head at different times that I'm on the beam. Like in practice, it just feels so natural. I've been standing on that four inch plank of wood for 18 years at this point so it just is really second nature for me it's almost like walking in the ground but there are times when it is nerve-wracking that's for sure (laughs) when you're trying to learn a new skill or something still scare me if i'm being completely honest it's you know the fear goes away after some time but it's always a little bit a little bit freaky because it is a little bit of a crazy event. It's four feet in the air and it's four inches wide. So just thinking about that makes my brain go a little wacky. So I try not to think about that a lot, but 
at a meet, the mentality can be very different than in practice. So in practice, we do tons and tons and tons of repetitions. And I've probably made at least 100 beam routines in practice before we even get to our first competition. But wow. then, of course, once you're on on the floor saluting to the judge and you're about to mount at that first meet, it's just so much emotion and so much energy. And you just want to hit your routine so badly that it's definitely a nerve wracking moment. But over time, I've learned to handle that a lot better. And I usually, well, I try to always, sometimes I get a little <laughs> outside of my brain, but I have words that I say throughout my routine to myself. So I might say one, two, three, breathe and show. That's just an example. But coaches talk about mental choreography, just like the physical choreography we're doing on the beam. So a lot of gymnasts will have a routine of words that they say in their head during the routine. So I use that trick a lot and it really helps so that I can transfer exactly what I'm doing in practice while I'm saying my words in the gym to what I am doing at a competition. Because when I say those things in my head, my body knows what to do. And that's just one way of keeping me normal because yes, there's more pressure at a competition, but your gymnastics doesn't have to change in the least. You're literally trying to do the exact same thing that you do every day, even though it seems so much harder because you're on a big stage in front of a ton of people. So that's a little bit of what goes through my head, but I try to stay calm. Another trick that I do is to smile before my beam routine and even when I'm on the beam sometimes because my coach told me one time that it actually changes the chemistry in your brain. So ever since I was seven or eight years old, I <laughs> tried to smile sometimes on the beam because it really takes away just a little bit of that fear and gives you a little bit of a boost of confidence, which can only help in making a great routine. Wow. Wow. That's pretty, that, that's pretty good, Leah. That's pretty good. I never, the, the mental choreography. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mental choreography and smiling. Yes. So those are mm -hmm. two things that are very much responsible for success at meets for me. Wow. 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 Man, I've, I've, I've enjoyed this. And that was, that was so good. That was so good right there. Oh, <laughs> Thank wow. you. Okay. Okay. So I want to, I want to ask you this question before we get ready to dive into the two minute drill. But if there was, if there was one person, right, living or dead, uh, and you had the opportunity to sit, sit down with them, one, one individual, uh, you know, pick their brain, have a dinner, have a conversation. Who would that person be for you? Oh my goodness. I, Think this is so funny because I literally recorded a podcast episode for my podcast yesterday and I asked my guest that same exact question and oh. I was thinking that she had such an amazing answer but if somebody asked me this question I wouldn't know what to say because there are so many amazing people out there and I love to get inspiration from all sorts of different people so I think I'm gonna go a completely different route and say that if I got to sit down and talk to something for a dinner i would talk to an animal i'm not mm. even like a pet person or really an animal person but i would love to know kind of what's going on in a dog's head or something like that <laughs> i think that would that would answer a lot of random questions i guess so i don't know i think that'd be interesting but honestly there are so many people out there that I would love to talk to and, you know, hopefully they do, but I can't pick one. Understood. I mean, that, I mean, that, that even in itself is a good answer. I, I think that's a good answer. Cause I, I'm always curious, like, why, why is the dog so happy to see this individual? And how do you even yeah. know that this individual is your owner? Like there's just so many that that can go so many different ways. So thank you for it. Thank you for sharing that one. Yeah. 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 So now we're going to we're going to dive into the to the two minute drill to the two minute drill. And everybody out there, if you have not followed Leah as of yet, make sure to follow her, follow her, follow her um, on Twitter at Leah Clapper 
on Instagram at Leah Clapper five. OK, the number five and two minute drill. For those of you all, this is the first time watching the two minute drill is where we're going to go through some rapid fire questions and just have a little bit of fun. So, Leah, are you ready? I am ready. All right. And here we go. Favorite food. Superfood salad, brownies or oatmeal. Mm, OK, OK. And what's the last book you read? Make noise. It's actually a podcasting book that I'm reading for a podcasting class that I'm in right now. I know this was supposed to be a rapid fire question, but thought it, I could explain that because it's a coincidence. But I've also read a lot of um, romantic comedy fun books recently. OK, OK. What, what's, what's your favorite podcast? Oh, man, there are many on my list so some of my favorites are on purpose with jay shetty meditative story um trained the nike podcast snacks daily which is a business news podcast science versus i always learn random stuff on that one and how to save a planet which is a climate change solutions podcast so i think i'm a little bit all over the place but I listen to those pretty regularly. I love it. I love it. What, what's your go-to streaming show of preference? Hmm, I'm thinking. So I watched Jane the Virgin and that was hilarious. That's one of my favorites, but I finished it. And so now I'm done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> um, I really like Friends. That's always just a lighthearted show to watch classic 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 and then what what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete oh man that's a heavy question in a rapid fire well you can take it you can take your time on this one take your time on this one leah take your time okay okay honestly be yourself i think that's just so important in life and just be authentic be you and that's the way that you are going to feel most alive and feel most like yourself. And that's always a good thing. So when you, when you feel like you're being yourself, I think you can, uh, you can get more done and put more amazingness out into the world. I love it. I love it. And bonus question, bonus question. Who would you like to see me interview next on beyond the ball? Oh man. Hmm. You know, this is a legitimate suggestion. Megan Skaggs, my teammate, would do amazing with this. She's okay. she's an amazing person. So yeah, and she's got a she's got a lot going on in terms of her her personal brand, and she's pretty cool. Okay, okay, there it is, there it is. Now, Leah, before I give you the chance to uh, just you know let people know where they can find you, follow, and connect with you, I just want to tell you something. Because I've, I've gone through and like I told you, I was listening to, well, I didn't tell you, but I listened to some of your, your podcast uh, episodes. I was on the website and I think you do a phenomenal job just in really giving people their flowers. Like, I'm not sure if anybody has ever told you that, but, but you're somebody that I can tell you really want to see people win and you really just encourage them and encourage them and you, and you up people. Cause I was listening to some of the episodes with some of your, the ones with two of your teammates. And, and then I heard you just encouraging them and just saying, well, yeah, you do this great and you do that great. And I was like, wow, she's really serious about this encouragement. So I just wanted to let you know that. I'm not sure if anybody's told you that lately. I'm not sure if anybody gave you your flowers today, but I want to give those to you. I wish I had a flower somewhere. Thank you here. so much. Well, I really but, appreciate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. But now, please let everybody know where they can find you, follow you, and connect with you, please, at this time, Miss Leah. Yes, absolutely. So I would love for you to follow me on Instagram, at Leah Clapper 5. My Twitter is at Leah Clapper, and you can follow my food blog at Zest and Finesse, all spelled out lowercase on Instagram. If you're going to go to one place, go to my Leah Clapper 5 Instagram, and yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. And you can also find other things linked on my normal Instagram as well, so you'll be able to get to my food blog, hear podcast news, and all that good stuff. 
Excellent. Excellent. Leah, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us, you know, the, the, the recipes and share with us, you know, your story and, and even your passion for podcasting. Like you're a, you're an avid podcaster and podcast listener. And I love it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So thank you so much for, for stopping by and thank you for uh, just, you know, spending your afternoon with us. Absolutely. I, I really appreciate it. And I had so much fun. Glad to hear it. Glad, glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. We will definitely stay connected. Yes, for sure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. To all the ballers out there, all the ballers, I would encourage you all, if you have not connected with Leah as of yet, I would encourage you, just like she said, go follow her on her platforms um, because she's doing amazing and phenomenal things, right? And I think that's one thing that, that's really, uh, really amazing to see about young leaders who are when, when people think of student athletes, sometimes they might think of somebody who's just an athlete or they're just a student or they're just those two things. But Leah really broke the ceiling on this one. She really broke the ceiling on this one. Just showing us, you know, with her doing the food blogging, also with her with the passion for podcasting and just really, you know, uh, praising and loving people at a high level. So connect with her. And if you have not, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right here, right here, right here, if you're watching the video. Uh, but other than that, until next time, ballers, uh, I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree. <laughs>